This is going to be the most competitive Olympia yet. What's up, you guys? Jeremy Buendia, your four-time men's physique Olympia champion. I've been competing in bodybuilding since I was 17 years old. With the support of my wife and daughter, I'll be making my return to Olympia stage in November 2023. And my biggest inspiration, you know, it comes from my dad. My dad has always been my, my biggest fan. So has my mom. They've been super supportive. Ever since a young age, I was always really sports oriented. My whole life revolved around athletics and, you know, having the discipline to always try to be the best. My dad is Filipino and he's always instilled this warrior mindset within me. So instead of the typical kid waking up to an alarm clock to go to school in the morning, I would wake up to hear my dad clinking the iron. And my dad got me in working out, you know, eight years old, nine years old, started doing push-ups and pull-ups and bar dips. And, you know, as a football player, American football player in high school, you know, we put a lot of emphasis in weight training. After my senior year in high school, I didn't get much taller than I am right now. And unfortunately, my football career ended, but I fell in love with the weight room. So I started taking on bodybuilding and I went to a local gym where I met some professional bodybuilders, Jimmy Lee and Valerie Ganji, and they introduced me to the sport and I was hooked ever since. I didn't really know much about bodybuilding as a sport until I got on stage for the very first time. I was brand new to competing. Um, I remember my first show um, I didn't know how I was going to go. Well, I had a coach that had me uh, shave my head into a mohawk and dye it blonde the night before the show to help me get more attention on stage from the judges. He told me when you're flexing on stage to scream and yell. When I got on stage and did all that, I noticed none of the competitors did that. I was kind of like on my own on my own little island and not really understanding the sport, but I lost that first show and it sparked a, a fire with me to not lose again. And I went on to compete um, and another show, and then I ended up doing, joining the NPC in, at 19 years old, where I won the uh, Northern California uh, Team Championship. And from then on, I've just been on a, a tear in the industry of just winning shows. And eventually I uh, switched over to men's physique in 2012. And um, that's where my career really took off. The thing I'm most proud of in Jeremy is his ability to set a goal and accomplish it. When we were younger and we dated the first time, he, he even had a list of things that he wanted to accomplish before he was 30. And I remember sitting there discussing it with him and we hadn't spoken for a few years. And when we reconnected in our older 20s, he had accomplished every single goal on that list. And being Mr. Olympia was one of them and he went and did it four times. So his ability to set his mind to something and accomplish it is just mind blowing to me. My motivation for coming back for number five is this unfinished business. I won my first Olympia title at 23 years old, and I lost my Olympia title at 27. The way I walked away from the stage in the industry wasn't necessarily the way I wanted to go out. There were a lot of things in my personal life that, you know, slowed me down, hindered me, and it wasn't necessarily the, the legacy I wanted to leave for Jeremy Buendia in this sport. You have to have your blinders on a lot of the time, I feel. You gotta, you gotta cancel out the noise and you gotta stay focused. And I feel that's where I went wrong in 2018 is I let a lot of the noise get to me and I let a lot of the distractions get to me and I wasn't able to perform at my best or give my best during that prep. And that's what was showed on the Olympia stage that year was not the best version of myself. That's why you're able to see a different physique this year in 2023 because I've been able to eliminate those distractions. And, you know, I have a much more structured life now and a lot more balanced life. So moving forward, I don't have any excuses to not bring my best to the stage this year. Having my wife and my daughter by my side, you know, I want my daughter to be able to look back on this and see all the old YouTube videos and footage and you know, be really proud of what her dad accomplished and overcame. And for me, it's the journey of overcoming all these obstacles and overcoming the voice in my head that's telling me I'm not good enough or that I can't do something. Because honestly, the past couple of years, you know, I let that voice in my head overtake me and get the best of me. And that's not something I ever let happen in my younger years. So losing myself a little bit and not to, to come back and define, you know, my true self, that champion, that warrior, I want to be able to reinstill this mindset for the rest of my life, not only in bodybuilding, but in everything I come across. Jeremy winning Olympia would mean it will be just so special for our whole family to witness it. And to have our daughter there, I know is one of the biggest motivators for him. After years off, after, you know, 
being unmotivated and not wanting to be involved in the bodybuilding community, I think just him gracing the stage again is a huge accomplishment for us because I've seen how much losing his title impacted him and how much it hurt him that he left the stage in a way that he wasn't proud of. I and mean, I just saw it haunted him. So for him to come back after all of that, thinking he'd never bodybuild again, and then to rediscover his passion for bodybuilding and for me to witness that has been incredible. So for him, just stepping on the Olympia stage again is gonna be a huge win for our family. But for him to get his title back, I just know it's gonna mean so much more to him. Winning Olympia again for the fifth time would mean a lot. I mean, it's been always been on my bucket list to get number five. That's why I have this tattoo on my neck here with the, with the tallies. After my second Olympia, I started doing this tally system on my neck with the, the hopes of getting that cross tally. And that was the end goal. It mean, it mean everything to me. It's just not just coming on stage and leaving with a trophy. It's just everything I've gone through to get back to this point to be my best. My training has changed significantly um, going into this prep. You know, I have to make sure I focus on my health and, stay, and getting through the next 12 weeks to be able to compete. I got told by the judges that my arms are too big, my legs are too big. So those are some of the things I've had to back off completely. I used to be on a five day bro split. I do chest, back, shoulders, legs, arms. I'm all basically on a three day split with one or two days off. You know, most of my 20s, I was a Mr. Olympia physique champion and that is majority of my identity was. And uh, when I lost, it was trying to figure out what was next for myself. It was a pretty tough time for me kind of spiraled out of control a little bit, had a lot of fun. I had a lot of success, you know, financially in 2018. I like to get to my head a lot. So after Olympia, um, you know, I, I partied a lot and it made a lot of bad decisions. And ultimately, it led me down a pretty, pretty dark hole. And I thought I had things figured out. But unfortunately, I had some um, bad relationships some business relationships that went sour and, you know, it kind of uh, left me at ground zero. And it wasn't until after my daughter was born that I really, um, you know, I started anchoring down and getting my shit back together because I had a family to provide for. You know, win or lose this Olympia, of course I want to win, but it's the lives I'm going to be able to touch along the way to make other people better. That's, that's, that's my goal. The relationship between me and the competitors before, there was none. I, I, I isolated myself completely from everybody because everybody was my enemy. And that was kind of the way I, I stayed competitive was by making everybody my enemy and, and disliking people and it fueled me. You know, now that I'm not that way anymore, I don't have that angry, hateful heart anymore within me that, you know, I've been able to have better relationships with my fellow competitors. And, you know, I want to beat everybody at their best. And I want to see everybody at their best. There's no point in winning Olympia when you catch somebody off or on a bad day. I definitely had thoughts about quitting, you know, and it's something I, I, I wrestle with on a daily basis because of how, you know, the pain I deal with on going to the gym and training every day. Some days are worse than others. and. You know, sometimes it's hard to get out of bed in the morning. I'll get in the gym and I'll be training and just everything hurts. And I will look at myself like, why am I doing this? Why am I putting myself through all this, this pain? There is a reason. It's because I, I have to overcome this. You know, there's, we're gonna experience pain in our lives, mentally, physically, spiritually. We're gonna always experience pain and hardships. And, you know, it's just kind of symbolic. My, the pain I feel physically is kind of the symbolic of all the pain I've gone through and overcome the past few years. And if I can overcome that, I know I can overcome, you know, the physical pain I'm, I'm going through in the gym every single day. My best advice is for the young guys is to be as healthy and as smart as possible. There's a lot of, a lot of people are trying to take shortcuts in the sport of bodybuilding and want to start at a young age like I did myself, but they also don't understand, you know, the risks of bodybuilding as well. I think we all know recently we've lost a lot of people in the sport at a young age, and that's something that we need to pay attention to and understand that it's, it can be avoided if things are done correctly. And I think people really need to start doing more homework and understanding things a lot better than just taking what they hear from social media and trying to apply it, but really doing their own you know, research and taking pride in their health and understanding themselves and not trying to replicate what somebody else is doing. My legacy I want to leave is the resilient five-time Men's Physique Olympia champion, somebody that got knocked down after having a lot of success that lost almost everything, that almost gave up on himself to rebuilding myself from the ground up and coming back better than ever. That's the legacy I want people to remember in Jeremy Buendia is, is that I didn't quit on myself and that other people that are going through similar things in their lives or going through those tough things or hardships that it's really easy to, to cower 
and you know go hide in a cave if you want to but it's getting up and fighting against those demons every day that are telling you to quit to fight back against them and say no to those things in your head that are telling you otherwise and to overcome that's that's the legacy i want people to remember of me